Welcome to AP Chemistry. In chapter one, we'll be doing a review of uh, basic unit conversions and sig figs and uh, making measurements, things that you have done before. So I'm hoping that you learn nothing new in chapter one, but it is a review of some basic concepts that we'll be using throughout the course. At some point, we'll be using most of these units in this first chart. And in the second chart, we should be familiar with some of these metric prefixes, specifically kilo through milli. These are ones that should be quick recall for you, uh, things that you've used in the past. I would know the order of these metric bases, these prefixes. Um, other ones we can look up. You know, if I see pico from time to time, I can look it up. This nano is one that I know we're going to use in chapter seven. We'll be measuring wavelengths of light, and that's usually measured in nanometers at teeny tiny fractions of a meter, 10 to the negative ninth meters. Or in other words, it would take 10 to the positive ninth nanometers to complete one meter. That might be another unit that you'd want to eventually be kind of familiar with. That one I know we'll use. I should be able to make a metric conversion in my sleep. Honestly, I still use the whole switch the decimal spot method. I have those six basic prefixes, quick recall in the back pocket. I can write down kilo, hecto, deca. Then comes the base unit, which would be like grams, meters, liters. Then deci, centi, and milli. We should make one quick note. I noticed in this chart they've got DECA as D-E-K-A, which is fine. But more often, you'll probably see it as um, D-E-C-A. So if you do see DECA written with a C, don't freak out. It's fine. Uh, if I've got decagrams and I want to switch to centigrams, all I have to do is move the decimal spot. I'm going to go one, two, three places to the right. One, two, three places with my decimal spot. So I'd be looking at 84. I'll put the decimal in there. 84 centigrams. Done. That should be something that doesn't cause you a lot of stress. Making a metric conversion should not be a skill that you're learning now for the first time. Now, the second one offers a little bit more challenge. I've got nanometers, and I want to switch them to centimeters. And maybe you are familiar with nano. Okay, well, I remember nano. That's 10 to the negative ninth meters. But you're like, well, I don't know how to get from nano to centi. Another option is this proportion method, which you've used before. I mean, this is stoichiometry in a sense. I've got 1,370 nanometers. And what if I say, okay, well, I, I can quick switch this out of nanometers. So the unit that you want to cancel goes on the bottom. I could get it to meters. The unit that you want goes on top. So now I could put in the relationship between nanometers and meters. And so I could say that one nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth meters. Now, another option. I'll throw this down here in red. You could also write the proportion. I want to switch this, oopsie, out of nanometers into meters. You could write this as one meter is 10 to the positive ninth nanometers. That would be totally fine as well. You'd end up with the same answer. I'm kind of a freak about canceling my units. Something about crossing those off makes me really happy. So right now I'd be in meters. And now maybe you say, oh, OK, well, from here I could switch uh, the decimal spot. Although this is kind of a funky number, so maybe that's something I don't really want to do. So I'll set up another proportion. I do not want this in meters. I want centimeters. And again, you do have a couple options. You could say to yourself, OK, centimeters are small. It's a hundredth of a meter. So every one centimeter is 10 to the negative second meters. Or your other option, I could set this up and say I want to cancel meters. I want it in centimeters. And you could say it would take me 100 centimeters to complete one meter. It's thinking, it's thinking. There we go. 
So these would be acceptable too. These red options are totally fine. Uh, I can cancel my units. I can get rid of meters and meters. And the unit I'm left with is centimeters. So it's basically just some dimensional analysis. Uh, I would plug this in my calculator, multiply across the top, divide by any numbers on the bottom, and I'd be looking at, ooh, tiny, 0 0.0001370. So either option is totally fine. Honestly, if I'm just switching between kilo and milli, I'm just flipping the decimal spot. But if I do get units that I'm not familiar with, then I like to set up the proportion. Either way should end you in the right spot. The other quick switch that we should be familiar with has to do with volume. Uh, I would certainly <laughs> hope that we're all familiar with volume being length times width times height. But it's this guy in the center. This one I should be familiar with. This will pop up throughout the course. Uh, that one below it, the cubic decimeter, I'm not real concerned about that one. Uh, but we will switch between like volume in, in milliliters and maybe cubic centimeters. It might be a, like we're comparing a solid and a liquid and the solid might have its volume in cubic centimeters and the liquid was measured in milliliters. Uh, so that would be a conversion that I definitely would be familiar with. If I wanted to switch from liters to cubic centimeters, I might be familiar with the fact that a liter is equivalent to a thousand milliliters. And if I know that a milliliter is equivalent to a cubic centimeter, that's a quick switch. 1,000 cubic centimeters. So just that one in the middle there, uh, the milliliters and cubic centimeters, that would be a volume conversion that you'd be expected to uh, be familiar with.